can see us through any trial and trouble. You look around in the world today and you see everything happening. And just like Brother Glenn said, I believe it's happening for a reason. That God's trying to wake people up. Maybe we don't understand sometimes. But you know what? More than anything that we need, we need more faith each and every day. Amen? Amen. We need to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to get stronger in Him because He's the only one that's going to see us through. There are so much people today that's running around and, and they're, they're scared to death, death of this coronavirus and everything that, that's going on around. But you know what? You can't let fear take a hold of your mind. Amen. 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 No matter what's going on in the world, you know, it's easy for the devil to slip in your mind and begin to try to pull you away from God through all this uh, trouble that's going on in the world. But you know what? You can't let your mind be troubled. And all this stuff that's going on today, we've got to learn that we've got to trust in God. There's so much unbelief today in the world today that's going on. I believe that God is trying to wake people up, doing his best to try to wake people up and let them see that we're living in the last day. That God is soon to come and he said to be you ready. You look around in the world today and you just like I seen the other day. And it, you know you can tell people that the coronavirus is coming and people will be forget try to get prepared. But you tell them Jesus is coming and then you know what? Amen. They're not they just go along doing what they want to do. But you know what? That's not going to stop him from coming. God is going to soon to come and he said to be you ready. I want to be ready. Amen. You know, just like I say today, you can look around in the world and we need more faith. We need to trust in God more than we've ever trusted him before. Amen. You know what? God, Jesus put the children in the wilderness for one reason. And you know what that was? To learn them to trust in Him. Amen. You know what? And we're still trying to learn to trust more in God each and every day. But you know what? A lot of times we can let unbelief begin to hinder our mind. We can let unbelief come in there. And you know what? People today say, well, I don't have no unbelief in me. Well, I'm glad you don't because I do. You know what? That might seem like a strange saying, but I'm telling you the truth tonight. There's things that I've got to get rid of because of unbelief. We can go through trials and we can go through troubles, but a lot of times we'll sit there and we want to get, we'll get down and we we'll want to throw ourselves a pity party, so to speak. And you know what? We let the devil get in our mind. He'll tell you just like today, it's easy. For people to let fear take a grip on them that they won't even get out of their house. There's people today that let fear grip them so bad. But you know what? That they can't come to church. But you know what? That's not a spirit of God. That's a spirit of the devil. That fear is a spirit of the devil. And you know what? A lot of times we'll get way into that fear. And we'll let fear grip our minds that we can't do nothing. Sometimes we'll let fear grip our mind when we're going through a trouble going through a trial and we seem like that we can't go on and we let the devil get in our mind and begin to tell us all kinds of things puts all kinds of thoughts in our mind but that's where we need more faith faith cometh but you know what every one of us needs more faith each and every day Amen. especially in the day that we're living in and you know what Jesus seen this did the disciples have unbelief in them did they yes. how many believe they did Amen. They sure did. And we're going to read about this here. Let's start here in Mark 16 and verse 14. And listen to what he says. He said, After he appeared unto the leaven, as they sat at meat, and he upbraided them. What, what's the word upbraided mean? He rebuked them. He scolded them. Sharply, severely. Because of why? Because, listen, with them, with their unbelief, and what? Hardness of heart. Hardness of heart. So did they have unbelief? Yes. Even though Jesus was walking with them, they still had unbelief, didn't they? They wasn't going to believe. A lot of what people today, you can tell them that God's coming. But you know what? They push it aside, and they don't even believe you know what? How many people were saved in the first world? Eight souls. And that was by water. Amen? Even though they were born daily, they were still probably millions. I don't know what the population was then, but no doubt there was millions of people that was lost because they wouldn't listen to God's word. That they wouldn't be obedient to God's word. How many people today have got that hardness of heart that they hear daily but yet they won't take heed 
and what is being said. You've got people that will go to church every day and they've got a hardness of heart that they won't even believe what God's word says. Man. Do you think that God's seen this? These things that was going to happen, don't you think God knew? Don't you think that God's big enough to look down in the day and age that you and I are living in? Don't you think that he knew what you and I were going to go through? I hear people today every day say, well, they didn't have these things back then. You know what? The, when the plagues was being poured out on Egypt, was God's people there? Amen. Did they go through the plagues? But who kept them? God kept them, didn't he? You know what? If you've got that blood applied, God will keep you too. If you've got the faith to believe in God and you're going to trust in the Lord, he's the only one. But you know what? There's so many people today that will trust in man that will want to put their trust in the government, but we better put our trust in God. Amen. Amen. That's where it lies at today. That's what we need more than anything. We need more faith each and every day. You know what? He said the just shall live by faith. Amen? These things are going to happen. But you know what? He said one thing. Let not your mind be troubled. How many today let this thing that's going around today trouble their mind? There's people today, I'll guarantee you. Now, I believe in being careful. Don't get me wrong. I think everybody should show a little bit of common sense. Amen. If you're sick and you just like you said, you got, got run the fever and stuff, you don't want to come and give it to somebody else. That's right. But you know what? I'm not going to let that put a fear in me that I can't come to church to serve God. Amen? Amen. There are so many people today that are listening to the government. The government will tell them, well, you can't have church. And so there they pour, they don't want to have church. And you know what? You can let fear grip your mind so badly, and it will grip your mind so bad that it'll, you'll fear so much that you can't even get out of your house to go to the church or do anything. Amen. Amen. But there's people today that's got... Enough, you could say they'll go to the store, that don't scare them, but yet they can't come to church. That's what you call fear. fear. That's what you let the devil get in your mind begin to tell you that you can't do this and you can't do that. What about the people that is in the hospitals that works around these things? You know what? I would tell them just like I tell you, you better be ready. Amen. If you're working around these things, the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God kept his people, don't you think he's big enough to keep you? Yeah, there is something that's going to take each and every one of us to our grave. Yeah. I don't know what it might be. I might, I might get the coronavirus tomorrow. I might die. But you know what? If it was my time to go, I'm going to go. Amen? If it was a car wreck that took me out, I know that I'm going to die. Every one of us is going to die and we're going to face the judgment. But you better be ready to go. That's what I'm telling you this morning. Be ye ready. Don't let all your troubles and all your trials get you down so much that you can't serve God. Don't let your fear get upon you that you can't pray, that you can't come to church, that you can't do these things. Because you know what? That's not the will of God. God wants you to press through your troubles and your trials. It's easy. It would be easy for anybody just to lay down and say, I give up. I quit. You know what? But that's a coward's way out. You're not going to make it to heaven by having an attitude like that. You've got to put on the mind of Christ. And did Christ go all the way? He went all the way to Calvary for us. Each and every one of us. And he died for each and every one of us. And I'll say one thing today. Are you willing to die for him? Amen. You know what? We died daily. Every one of us today died daily. Through the troubles and the trials that we go through today, it makes us a stronger person. It makes us a better Christian if we let God lead us and guide us through the trials and through the troubles that we go through. But we can't let these things that go on around us get you down so much that you can't serve the Lord. Amen? Amen? That's just a fear. Listen, hold your places there just a minute. And let's go to, up to uh, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. And let's just, I've quoted this a while ago, but I just want you to see it. Second Timothy 1, verse 7. For God hath what? Not given. Hath what? Not given. Not given us the spirit of what? Fear. Of uh, the spirit of fear. Amen? 
So if the spirit of fear is upon you tonight, God didn't put it there. Amen? Amen. That devil was planted to tear, not God. Listen to what he said. But of power and of love and of a spot. Sound mind. sound mind. Is it possible to have a sound mind with, with you thinking about fear all the time? What's going to happen? That this is going to happen to you if I do this or if I do that or if I go down to that church I'm going to catch this or I'm going to catch that. You're letting the devil defeat you. You're letting that fear come on and you're letting fear take a grip on you. That's what the world is doing today. Fear has gripped the whole world at the running. They're scared from everything. But you know what? You better fear God. That's the one that you got to fear tonight. Don't fear all these things that's going on in the world. They'll get in your mind to where you can't even serve God. The devil will put it in your mind that you better not go to that house of prayer because somebody is going to give you that disease. That's a fear. That's a fear. That the devil will try to come into your mind. And he'll try to grip your mind so strongly that you, can't, that you think that you can't get out of your house. I'm not going to live by fear. People can do what they want to do, but I'm just telling you, you might not understand this this morning. You might not understand what I'm trying to say. But you know, perfect love casteth out all fear. Amen? Amen. Perfect love casteth out all fear. We're going to go through troubles. We're going to go through trials. Through all these things in this world, you're going to go through them. Amen. So don't let fear grip your mind. Don't let fear take over. Let God take over your mind. Amen. Listen to what God says. Be obedient to the word of God. Listen to what he says. You know what? I wrote down here this morning. It says, ways to hinder you. You know how many, how many ways they are to hinder you? That the devil's got all kinds of ways to hinder you. But you know what? One way he's got to hinder you is by not knowing his word. Amen? He'll hinder you if you do not know his word. And then he'll hinder you again by not obeying his word. Amen? Amen? There's a whole lot of people that know the word of God, but they won't obey it. That way, then it becomes a hindrance because they won't be obedient to God. And then another one is by letting fear take over. You can let fear take over so bad that you begin to let that wrong spirit lead you and guide you. And you know what? When that spirit of fear comes in, it's hard to get out. And you know what? So many people are being gripped by fear when we need to be gripped by the Spirit of God. We need to let God lead us and guide us. Do you think that God is big enough to take care of you? Amen. Amen. Don't you think God's big enough to take care of us? Amen. How many believe that He is? Oh, God's big enough to do all things. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. We'll fear all these diseases, but we can't fear God. Amen. Come on, buddy. What's wrong with people today? They let this fear grip them. Fear grip. Fear's gripping the whole nation right now. That people don't know which way to turn. But I'll tell you which way to turn. Turn to God. Amen. Turn to God. He's your answer in the time of trouble. Yes, he is. You know what? Just like I say, if I would get coronavirus tomorrow and I would die, I'm still going to stand on the word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to let grip, fear grip me so bad that I can't go on. Come on More people die of the flu than they have of the coronavirus. You know why? Because it's something new that people fear. They've never seen it before. Right. And you know what? I ain't seen God before, but I'm going to fear God. Amen. Because I know he holds the key yeah, to the life and death tonight. If you want to make it to heaven, you've got to turn to God. You've got to be obedient to his word all the way to the end. That's the only way, children, that we're going to make it as a nation. We look around every nation that forgets God is going to be turned into hell. Right. You know what? That's the reason this nation is being turned into hell. They've left God. Amen. They've forgotten Amen. his commandments. They've forgotten what God said to do. They think that they can work out their own salvation, not their own salvation, but their own plans of salvation, and still think they're going to make it right. right. Think that they can do any way they want to do, serve God any way they want to serve him, and they're still going to make it. But let's see what God's word says. Listen to what he said. Let's go back to the lesson. Back to the lesson. I want you to realize something tonight. No devil, I say this again, no devil has dominion over God's people. Amen. Amen? Amen. No devil, I say no devil, Amen. has dominion over God's people. Don't you think that God in us is greater than anything that's in that world? Amen. 
Amen. God is able to see us through all our troubles and trials, all of our afflictions, everything that comes upon us. God is greater than any disease. God is able to see you through. So why worry about it? If you're going to catch it, if something's airborne and you're going to catch it, you're going to catch it. Sometimes we can take all the prevention that we know, but that still don't mean that you're not going to catch it. But what I'm saying is I'm not going to let fear grip my mind that I can't go to the house of God because I fear all these things that's going on in the world. Don't let your mind be troubled. Don't let it trouble your mind. Only thing that you can do is pray and seek God and ask God to touch these people. Ask God to wake them up. But you know what? People need to wake it up in their own mind what they're going to do. We can pray for people, but you know what? I can't save people. I can tell them what they need to do, but when God knocks upon their heart, it's up to them whether they want to take that first step or not. And a lot of people's heart is so hard that I don't know what it's going to take to break it. Only God can do it. But God's not going to come down here and pick people up and bring them to an altar. No. They've got to take that first step. Amen. When God begins to knock upon their heart and tell them it's time to come home, then they're the ones that's got to come out of there. You ever remember the time that you made that first step? You remember when God knocked upon your heart and God gave you a heart of flesh? Listen, to where you could serve God and broke that old hardened heart. And it seems like when that preacher gave the altar call, it seems like when you come out of there and make that first step, it's always going to be the heart. And when you make that first step, I'll say you one thing, God let God lead you and guide you. It seems like you just floated down that aisle. I remember the first time that God had dealt with my soul as a young lad in Sunday school. God, give me my first calling. And when I gripped the chairs and we had theater seats in the, in the, in the church, and I gripped those seats, theater seats until the veins raised up on my arm because I was just about 15 or 16 years old when God first called me, but I wasn't ready. I made it up in my mind that I couldn't go because everybody was going to make fun of me. But you know what? That was just a tactic of the devil. That was just a trick of the devil to get in your mind to try to tell you that you couldn't do these things. But you know what? I know that I couldn't do them, but I know that God could do them through me if I would let just be obedient to God and submit myself to God, then God would work it out. And you know what? Those are people today that's got to take that first step. They've got to come out of there and they've got to do what God's word says. Listen to what he says, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the what? Gospel. gospel. That gospel is supposed to be good news. Amen? Amen. That's the good news. Preach it to who? Every. Every creature. And he that what? Believeth, Believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall what? Amen. Now would it do me any good to be baptized if I didn't believe? Would it do me any good to be baptized if I didn't even believe the word of God? If I didn't even believe what God's word said, it wouldn't do me a bit of good to be baptized. But he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, in other words, that you have to be baptized, shall be damned. There's a lot of people today that will try to say that you don't even have to be baptized. Water baptism is not essential. Well, if it's not essential, where did the church first originate at? On the day of Pentecost. Amen? How many souls were saved? 3,000 souls were saved. How was they saved? By water. And you say water is not essential? I beg your pardon. That's not what the Word says. So much unbelief that people don't even believe what God's Word says. They'll go upon what they believe, what they think about it, but they won't go on what God's word says about it. Let every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. Listen. Let's go to Hosea 4, 1 through 8. Now this is like it is today. Listen to what he says. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is what? No truth. No truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge, catch that, nor knowledge of God in the land. 
You know, they didn't even understand until God gave them the understanding. God had to first give them the understanding to where they could understand the scriptures. And that God, don't you think God's big enough today to give you understanding? But you know what? Instead of trusting God, today people go to a religious bookstore to try to get the revelation. You're not going to get your revelation in a religious bookstore. Do you think the apostles went to a religious bookstore? No. How'd they get their revelation? They got their revelation by praying and seeking God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. By asking God. Let God reveal it to them. But you know what? Today people are so lazy that they don't want to read for themselves. That they don't want to study for themselves. He said, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And if it can be rightly divided, don't you think it's wrongly divided? Today that you and I are living in? Today people's not going to tell you the truth. Because you know why? They know their crowds want to go down. When you begin to tell people there's a way that God's got to do things, that God's got a way for his people to dress, a way for his people to act, a way for his people to go, people don't want to do that. They say, well, I don't believe that. Well, if you don't believe it, what is it? If you don't believe, what are you? You're an unbeliever. Amen? Do you think unbelievers is going to make it in? No. We'll go there in just a minute. Listen. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery and they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of the heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken. Now listen to this one. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another. For thy people are, the, are as they that strive with who? The with the priest. Don't you think they strived with Moses? Every time something come up, who did they blame? Who did they blame? Moses, Moses you led us out of this wilderness. Yeah. Led us all the way out here to be destroyed. And they asked him a question. Can God make a table in the wilderness? God can make a table anywhere. Amen. Brother, I'll tell you what, God will feed his people. Yeah. God will feed his people. I'll say one thing, there's nothing. You know what, even made the waters come out of the rocks. Amen. I'll say one thing, he fed his people in the time of need, he give his people water. In the time of need, God is able to take care of you in your time of need. Amen, that's the God that we serve tonight. There's nothing that's impossible with our almighty God. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Yes, Lord. we got to trust in God. We've got to have faith. And we've got to believe God. That God's going to see us through everything that we go through. I'll say one thing today. We all need more faith. I'll say I. I need more faith. I don't know where people are at today. But I know I need more faith. Amen. Each and every day. I need more faith. Listen. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Now listen to what he says. My people, God's people, are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. Was the knowledge there? It was there, wasn't it? But listen to what he said. Because thou hast what? Rejected knowledge. Now the knowledge was there, but people hardened their hearts that they didn't want to listen. How many have got up that when you've, somebody's preached a message? And, and boy, I tell you what, I've heard a lot of things. People talk when you get out of church and they'll say, boy, I didn't believe that. I don't believe that. Be careful what you say. If it's the word of God, if God's word is true. You may not understand it. Say, I don't understand. Don't say, I don't believe. Listen. I will also reject thee. For thou shalt be no priest to me. See, thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget who? That's a great curse right there. Yeah. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up sin of my people 
And they set their heart on what? Iniquity. On their iniquity. Matthew 11 and 20. Here's another word, just like he's talking about in Mark 16. Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Even though he told them and he warned them, yet they didn't even repent. That's the same way that we're living today. I wonder many times, and I sat around and I thought, what's it going to take? What's it going to take to get sinner people into church? You remember years ago when, the, when you'd have a revival, and boy, I'll tell you what, there would be a lot of sinners that would come to a revival. They would. People come to the house of God. But today, the devil's made so much to do, it's even hard to get God's own people in the house of God, yet alone sinners. Amen. 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 This is true today. Yes. Don't you think God looked down and God could see the very thing that was a happening, that people was going through, that people got away from God? What's it going to take? There's going to be few that's going to make it. Many are called, but he said few are chosen. I want to be one of the chosen few, don't you? I, I want to be one of the chosen few. I don't want to be one of the many that's called and being called and not be able to finish my race with God. You know what? I've seen many people take off running, but this is not a race to the quit. This is a marathon. This is not no sprint. It's not how fast you start. It's where you finish. Are you willing to go all the way with God? Are you willing to go all the way? I'll say one thing. We don't know what we're going to face tomorrow. There may be something new that breaks out tomorrow. We don't know. He talked about pestilence being up on the earth, and truly it is today. We're facing things that we've never, ever seen in our lifetime. Years ago when the first tsunami hit, I never, ever heard of a tsunami. Maybe somebody else did. I didn't. Never, ever heard of a tsunami. Never heard of the SARS epidemic that began to break out. AIDS breaking out. Now coronavirus virus breaking out. Never heard of all these different diseases that was a breaking out. Don't you think that God's trying to wake people up? Don't you think that God's trying to show people that he's soon to come? But yet people will push it right aside and not even believe what the word of God says. Somebody can warn them and yet they just laugh it off. I know. I was there one time myself. I did the very same thing. And you know what? I've been around people today. Used to be around people that they would make fun of God. And you know what? That would send a fear through me more than anything. Because I knew better. I knew better. I hated to see somebody make fun of God or do things that they would mock God. Because I knew where they was going to wind up going if they didn't change the way. You know what? It seemed like the fear would grip you. But you know what? I'll say one thing today. We all need a closer world walk with God. I used to think, boy, you know, time and time, we need more faith today than ever before. And I'll say one thing, it's going to take more tomorrow than what you've got today if you want to make it. Don't be satisfied with what you've got today. It may not keep you tomorrow. We need more and more each and every day. Amen. Faith, I, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Listen to what he said. Mark 9, 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a what? Hath a dumb spirit. And who, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, that they should cast him out. And they what? Could not. And they could not. You know what, wouldn't that be such a great miracle to see somebody that wasn't in the right mind or maybe that was so slow? You know what? Those people in the state that they're in is better than you and I. Yeah. I believe they got a better chance to make it than you and I. I do but you know what, wouldn't it be a great miracle to see somebody come down and the church lay hands on them and God give them back the right mind? God's still in the healing business, children. God can still do the miracles that he did back then. Amen. 
I don't care what the world says. don't care what the church world says. God's still in the miracle business today. God's still in the business of healing. And every day, God is still healing souls. God is saving souls every day. We might not see it. It might be someplace else. But God's still in the saving business today that we're living in today. Amen. Amen. God's never changed. It's people that's changed. They've changed God's word so much that they don't believe, that they've hardened their heart, that no matter what you say, you're not going to get through to them. The only thing that you can do is warn them. And if God can't save them, there's nothing that I can do. Amen. I can pray for them. Yep. I can say, Lord, change their heart. Lord, take that old stony heart away and give them a heart of flesh to where they can serve you. But you know what? There's people today that's heart in their own heart. That they won't come to the house of prayer. That they won't do what God says to do because they know that there's a certain way that they've got to live. They can't continue to do the things that they're doing in the world today. People today, so many people today are not willing to change. And that's not God's fault. God calls them, but there's things that you and I have to do. Amen? God will show you what you have to do, but you're the one that's got to lay it off. You're the one that's got to pick it up. When God shows you something, reveals something to you, you're the one that's got to lay it down. We think automatically that God's going to come down here and just paint us a rosy picture and going to dress us up like he wants us to. But you're the one that's got to put the dress the right way. Amen? You're the one that's got to walk the right way. When God reveals things to you, you're the one that's got to walk. Amen. When he shows them to you. The biggest scripture today that the world knows is the biggest thing that they use today. You're judging me. You're judging me. You know what? The saints is going to judge the world. And he said, you know what? He said, if you judge, use the righteous judgment. This right here is the most righteous judgment that you can find. And if the word of God says you better not do it, then you better not do it. And if the word of God says to do it, then you better do it. Because you know what? You're, if you don't, you're going to be lost. I'll be lost if I don't do what God tells me to do. Listen. And he answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? And how long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straight away the spirit tearing and fell on the ground, wallowed and foamed. You know what? Why do you think that was the case? Don't you think that old dumb spirit, that old foul spirit, don't you think that he knew who Jesus was? Amen. Don't you think that it scared him so much that he was a trying to get out of Dodge? He was trying to get away as far from, far from God as he could by tearing this young man apart. He wanted out of there. But you know what? Listen to what he said. And he asked his father, how long ago is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child. And all times, listen, it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But that, but listen to what he says. He already had doubt and unbelief in him. But listen to what he says. But if that, don't you think that word if is a doubt? Yes. Yeah. If you're coming to an almighty God and you're saying if you can do this, God can do all things. God can perform all miracles. Listen to what he said. If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst what? Believe. If thou canst believe some things. All things. Don't say some things, does it? No. Says all things are possible to him that what? Believe. That believe. Now do you think that we really have faith that we should have? Do you think that you and I have got the faith that we really need? We need more. We need more of it each and every day. Amen? Uh -huh. Listen to what he said. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but what? Help, Help thou my unbelief. I say, Lord, if I say every night when I pray, Lord, I believe, but Lord, take all the unbelief, everything, that's not like you, Lord. Take it out. Let me see it, Lord, that I can get rid of it. 
Because I need more of you. I don't need the unbelief. I need more belief. I need more power of God. Every one of us need more of God down inside us. To where God can do all these things. You know what? We look for miracles today. But you know what? A lot of times the miracles being taken place when you see a soul come up here and they give their life to God. Don't you think that's a miracle? Don't you think that's a miracle? That God has called somebody home and put them with their feet upon that solid rock that they've made a change in their life and that they're willing to go on and do what God says to do. Don't you think that's a miracle? But you know what? We look for the things that comes from these natural eyes. We look for the natural spiritual th the natural things. We want to see everything. We want to see everything done in our time. We want to see everything done when we think that it should be done. But what about when God says? It's in God's time. God has got all time in control. And I'll say one thing today. If you've got the Holy Ghost, God can work those miracles through you tonight. And I'll say one thing today. God's miracles are in you tonight, but will you let God use you? Will you let God use you? And do you believe what God said? Do you have the faith believing? I heard people today say, I never go to the doctor. Don't need the doctor. Well, if you don't have faith, you better go to the doctor or you're going to die. Amen? If I don't have faith believing in something, and I, I better go to the doctor or I'm going to die. But that's the reason that we all need more faith. What would happen if you couldn't get to a doctor? What happened if something would happen and you'd never be around the doctor? Could you pray? Would you have the faith believing enough that God was going to touch you? If somebody would bring somebody to you, do you have enough faith believing that God can heal them? Hey Amen. Think about this. Do we have that faith? Listen. Verse 26. And the Spirit cried and rent sore and came out of him. And he as is one as dead. Insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? Lord, we prayed over him. Lord, we did what we thought we should was right. Why couldn't we cast him out? And he said unto them, This come, Cain can come forth by nothing but by what? Prayer. But by prayer and what? Fast. You know what? It's a sad thing today in church. That people can't pray. What do you think this is? House of prayer. House of prayer. Amen. House of prayer. House of worship. And you know what? We'll let the devil talk to us a lot of times that we can't even pray to God. <coughs> I hope you understand what I'm talking about this morning. Prayer is the key. Amen. Prayer and fasting. If we can't pray for one another, then we better examine ourselves. Yes. Amen? Amen? If we can't pray, I've said this a hundred times and we'll keep saying it. If we got an aisle full of people here and nobody to pray with them, something's wrong. Yes. And we got enough people here to pray with them, Amen. there should be people gathered around praying. Amen. If something's wrong and you can't get up here to pray, then you need to be praying for them with at your seat. You don't need to be visiting somebody. You don't need to be running around the church talking about everything else. But you need to be praying. Amen. This is a house of prayer. Amen. This is a serious place. This is where God can strike you down. But yet we take it so we just push it aside. And don't think how serious it really is. Right. We got everything to do. But we don't have time to pray. <clears throat> unless it's one of yours. Amen? I've seen it time and time again. Somebody's family would come up and they'd flock up around and pray. Stranger come in or somebody else, people just sit back. Is that the love of God? Is that the love of God? Somebody prayed for you. Somebody prayed for you. I don't care if it's the biggest dope addict in this Lawrence County. 
If they would come and give their life to God, I'd be right there praying for them. That's right. Amen. If it was one of yours, I'd be right there praying with them. <coughs> I'm not going to show a difference. I'm not going to show respect to person. But I'm going to be praying with whomever comes up around this altar. I'll be praying with them. And when you sign to see me that I don't, you remind me. You remind me. Because I don't want to show respect to person. I want to pray for everybody. He didn't just tell me to pray for a few. He said to pray. Pray for everyone. Let's pray for everybody. Not just a few. Let's pray for everybody. This is how we get closer with God. When they put Paul and Silas in prison, the very first thing they did, what did they do? They prayed. They prayed. But what would happen if somebody had something against Paul and Silas and they didn't pray? He'd still be there. We take this lightly, and it's not to be taken lightly. I say this every night. This altar, when it's up here, everybody should be up here if you're able. If you're able. I know there's some people that sell up heavily that can't get around. But you know what? If you're able, you need to be right here. You've got family that needs to be saved. I've got family that needs to be saved. You've got people within the church, your brothers and sisters, that's laboring to try to receive the Holy Ghost. You should be there laboring with them. Somebody labored with you. Or did you forget? It's easy the devil will try to get you to forget things. But don't never forget where God brought you from. Don't never forget what God told you to do. We all need to be praying over each and every day. This is a house of prayer. This is a sinner's hospital. This is my place where I come to get my strength. Amen. 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 I come to get my strength at the house of God. Amen. At the house of prayer. When I hear the word of God, and I'll tell you what, it just like it feeds your soul, it puts gas in your gas tank to go another week. Amen. Or another day until you get back to the house of prayer. Yes. Okay, let's listen. Let's go to uh, the book of St. John real quick. You know, Jesus could have healed everybody that he came in contact with, but he didn't. You know why he did? Unbelief. Unbelief. Listen to what he says right here. Six. Shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And they said, when, when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles. Ye didn't seek me because ye seen how I multiplied all the fishes and these loaves of bread. You didn't follow me because you saw all these miracles that I performed, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. <coughs> In other words, they wanted the natural meat more than the spiritual meat. They was more worried about their stomachs than there was the power of God. <coughs> even though the God even told them. Now, God could have done, God, he could do everything. There's nothing that God can't do. Amen. Amen. God cannot lie. <laughs> We all know that, that God can still perform miracles today. But people look at the natural thing more than they look at the spiritual thing. They worry more about their belly. People today flock into the grocery stores today to try to stock up on food because they're afraid that they're going to starve. But what did Jesus promise you? What did Jesus promise us? Did he promise us food and raiment? Don't you think he's big enough to feed you? He fed them out in the wilderness. So don't you think that's the same God that you and I are serving today? Yes. So why are there such a big rush? Why is people in fear? Take the grip on them. Well, I tell you what, we let a lot of little things get into our mind, but we can't serve God. 
that we'll do the natural thing, but we don't want to do the spiritual. <clears throat> we don't want to depend upon God. We don't want to take the time that we have to ask God. He said, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be given. Do you want to take time to pray? Say, God, you know what I need, mean, Lord, and you're bigger than any problem that's out there in that world. If I just learn to trust in you, well, here's how. Let's look. Romans 10. Verse 14. And then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear with what? Without a what? Well, I thought we didn't need preachers. I thought we didn't need pastors. I thought we didn't need evangelists. Is that what the word says? Listen. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Was they sent by denomination? Did they be sent by denomination or organization? No. By mom or dad? you got to be sent by God. Amen. Amen. That's the difference. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. <laughs> but they have not all what? Obey. Obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh the what? Hearing. How do you hear it? By the, God. By the preacher getting up and preaching the word of God to you. Amen? Yeah. Listen. And hearing by the word of God. Then he which hath received, listen, Matthew 25 and 24. Then he which hath received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was what? Right. Right. You think that's fear? Amen. If he was afraid, don't you think he feared? <coughs> and he's in other words, he said, and I was fear. I feared, listen, I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent to the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is designed. And Revelations 21, 6 through 8. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is what? A thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit what? All things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now listen to this. But the what? Fearful. But the fearful. And the what? Unbelieving. Unbelieving. And the abominable. <laughs> and murderers. And whoremongers. And sorcerers. And adulterers. And all liars. Now this is not my words. This is wrote in red. Amen? Amen. This is not my words. I'm just a messenger. Listen. And all, listen. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the what? Second death. Second death. So if you let fear grip you, and you believe and don't even believe what God's word says, what does the Bible say? Where are they going to have their part at? In the lake of fire. So don't let the fear grip you so bad that you forget where God is. God's always there with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. That's a promise that God has given to each and every one of us today. That's a promise, and God's not going to lie to you. It's impossible for God to lie. But we've got to have faith, believing that God is going to do these things. And you know what? God's still right there and done. God's big enough to see you through any trouble, through any trial, but we've got to believe in God, and we've got to increase our faith each and every day. You know what? We walk by faith. Amen. We don't walk by sight. Yep. And you know what? I used to have a hard time believing what that said. I couldn't understand what it said. I thought many times until one day somebody was, I believe it was Brother Bill Hankins was here teaching on a Wednesday night. And when he finally said that, it says like a light switch went off in my head. That I'm not walking by these old eyeballs. I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by yeah. what God's Word Amen. says. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. And I'll say one thing today. That's what we all need to do. We need to walk with faith. But what God's word says, 
Not what I think about it, what some other preacher down the road thinks about it, but what God's Word says. God's Word is true. It'll never deceive you tonight, children, if you just trust in an Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Brother Glenn. Let's get a song, children. And let's... Anybody want to pray? This altar is open. I'm speaking the Holy Ghost. Amen. You want to get prayed for? You want to get anointed? Amen. Let's all gather around. Some